Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. And if you have watched David when he plays, God has just spoke to my spirit that we're not going to lose the second time. Amen. We're not going to lose the second time. Amen. We're going to the club is a stepping stone because there are people who are waiting for you Amen. to take you to the place called here. Amen. To take you to the place called here. Amen. Am I right? The Bible says affliction shall not rise the second time. Yeah. He lost our brother and he said, no, I'm no longer interested in football. Yeah. But to you, we shall give everything we have lost. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I should go to that place. Go with full expectation. Because it's a stepping stone for us to reap what we have sown over the years. Yeah. Come yeah. with me this morning to the book of Second Kings. Second Kings chapter six. We're going to read. If you have them in different 
translation, I would like to read from King James Amplified New American Standard Version and New International Version. If you have them, if you don't have them, I will do the reading myself. But let's start from King James Version. Second Kings chapter 6, verse number 1. Shall we read together? And the sons of the prophets said not Elisha, Behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Do you have a preferred version? No, sir. Okay, I'm going to read a preferred version. It says, The sons of the prophets said to Elisha, Look now, the place where we live before you is too small for us. New America Standard. Now the sons of prophets said to Elisha, Behold now, the place before you, where we are living, is too limited for us. New International Version. The company of the prophets said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 10, verse number 27. Isaiah chapter 10, verse number 27. 10, 27, verse number 27. see it. That this thing 
is so little. It's almost nothing. Too small. In our moment of expansion, we are not to have too small. We are to have too big. Because expansion means enlargement, increase, multiplication, abundance. The social prophet, the soil vision. The soil vision. That is not where God wants them to be. They if you search a better place, a bigger place. The vision is we are the source of the prophets. They have been hearing the word of God. They have been hearing the teaching of the word of God. The time came in their life and they said, no, we want to practicalize what we have been hearing. We have been hearing about the wonders of God. We have been hearing about the miracles of God. But in our immediate environment, there is no proof of what we have been seeing. The sons of prophets, those who know their God, they say, no, it is said that we shall be strong and we shall do exploits. They spoke. They believe on the word they spoke. We also believe and so we speak. Say, oh Lord my God, oh Lord, every smallness, every small thing in my life today I prophesy an increase over my life in every area in the name of Jesus. What do you recognize that what you have is not what you deserve? You may not be able to discern to have what you deserve. Never you be contented where you are. I don't know where you are today, but I've come to announce to you that God wants to give you something bigger than what you are Amen. Stop looking down on yourself. Stop limiting yourself to where you are. Because where you are is a stepping stone to where God is taking you. Amen. But you have to recognize it that this is small for me. I need something bigger than this. The Bible says they spoke. They believe and they spoke. And Paul and Corinthians says, so even we ourselves, we believe. And so do we speak. What are you speaking about your life? What are you speaking about the situation that surrounds you? Even if you feel that it is big. After all, that is also bigger and biggest. Why settling down for that? Behold, see the power of sight. They said in that first verse, they said to Elisha, Behold, they were able to turn in their spiritual eyes. They were able to see beyond now. They called the attention of the man of God and said, Look, behold, see the power of sight. We preach and we say, as far as you can see, whatever you cannot visualize, you cannot have it. Whatever you cannot see, you cannot have it. Whatever you cannot see from the spiritual aspect of your eyes, you can't have it. The Bible said, Joshua and Caleb, they said to them, no, we are able to go up and take their country. Amen. We can make it. We are able. We have what it takes. And 10 people came and said, no, we are not able. We can make it. Yes, the ground is good. Yes, the land is fruitful. Yes, there is fruit. There is good things in that land. But we are not able. You know how they qualify themselves? They said, we saw in their eyes 
They put on the eyes of the unbelievers and say, we, we saw in their eyes, we are looking like grasshoppers. We are not grasshoppers, but we put on their eyes to see ourselves. And what we are seeing is just ants. And they say, we cannot make it. The Bible said they brought back in the pot to the camp of God's people. And God's people were weeping everywhere. And Joshua and Caleb came out and said, No, it's not so. We are able to go up and take that country. To possess that land from Jordan to the sea is true. To the giants may be on the way to it now. God will surely give us in to read. And God came down and said to Moses, Stop, 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 stop. Say to Joshua and Caleb, I have heard you. Two of you will get to the promised land. They said to the rest of them, and all the Israelites who agree with them, that they can make it, say to them, as long as I live, what they have spoken with their mouth is what I'm going to do to them. They're not going to enter the promised land. They're living off for 40 years. They were going on a journey that should have taken them 40 days. God was trying them until he impaled all the people who said they will not make it. One day, Jacob came to Joshua and said, Brother Joshua, do you remember that Brother Moses promised you and I at this mountain is a particular place where Jacob Moses said, it belongs to me, Caleb. I was 40 years old when Moses gave this land to me. But the enemies are dwelling in that land. Give me that same land. I am 20 years today. That God who gave it to me when I was 40 years old, he will give me the power. But Joshua said, let me give you men to help you. He said, no, 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 no. The same yesterday, today and forever, has God changed. My God will never change. Yes, yesterday, and now he's 80. He's saying, I will go. The Bible said, Caleb went, and God gave him victory. The cause of the power of sight. When men said that he's casting down, Joshua and Caleb said that's lifting up. When they said there is no hope, these two young people said, We can make it. And they made it to the promised land. Go and read your Bible. Every other one died on the road. All the people who made Canaan were the children who were born on the journey. Their father, their mother, every one of them who have said they will not make it, they didn't make it. What do you confess with your mouth? What do you say with your mouth? What you speak comes to you. The Bible said that behold and say, we are able, as far as we can see, we will make it. And God stood by them. Hallelujah. Amen. The place is too small for us. They said to, to the man of God, this place is too small for us. Are you satisfied with where you are? Where your are is too small compared to where God wants to take you to. Amen. They said to the man of God, no, we are not satisfied here. We need a better place. This place is too small. They saw the Nsidingo. They saw the Nsidingo. They saw the need. Is your eyes open? Are you seeing the need? Child of God, every day I live with a burden in my heart because as I grow older and as God blesses me, I see people who are in more need. I see people whom I should have been a blessing to. I see people who are calling on me. I see people and what they are calling to me are minor things of life that could be taken care of. It's minor to me, but before them it is a big burden. And every time I receive this call, my heart bleeds. I say, God, what you have given to me is too small. There are men and women, there are boys and girls, there are people I want to change by the grace of God, that situation. I want to give a helping hand. 
I want to be a blessing to them. I want to be a blessing to my generation. What you have put in my hand is too small. Increase it so that I may be a blessing for more people. Are you seeing the needs around you? Or you are satisfied frying your onion, eating your three times meal? And you think that it's easy for everybody. You eat and you throw away. You don't know there are people who are going to the dustbin to pick food on daily basis to put in their stomach. Are you seeing the need surrounding you? Are you seeing the children who are running around in the school? Without going to school, the school is opening on Monday. Many children will not go because they cannot afford it. Their parents cannot afford it. They cannot buy a uniform. They cannot do nothing. It's too small for them to be able to meet up. Can you ask God to open your eyes to see the need around you? Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty after righteousness. Let's see this scripture I'll be with you on Genesis 27, verse number 40. It's our last scripture. Genesis 27, 40. Are you there? Shall we read together? If you are there. 41 to go. And by the sword shall thou live. And shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass. When thou shalt have dominion, that thou shalt bring soul for all thy life. That is the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, where he says, Because of the anointing, the yoke shall be broken. This was Esau. When Esau lost his birthright, he cried to his father. He cried with all tears. The more he cried to Jacob, the more he cried to Isaac. Isaac keep blessing Jacob the more. He said to his father, stop, stop. I'm saying give me one blessing. And you are adding more blessing to the man who has already been blessed. And you are heaping more cause upon me. The Bible said, as his soul was walking away in rage, anger, and wrath, as he called him back and said, It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. That the burden of your brother will be taken away from you when thou has become violent in your spirit. And the yoke shall be taken off from you. You need to get angry with where you are so that you'll be able to see where you're going. Amen. Don't be so comfortable with what you have because what God has for you is bigger than what you're having. How much do you desire a change? This is our mood of expansion, our mood of enlargement, our mood of increase in our year of satisfaction. How much change do you desire? How much cross are you with the present situation you found yourself? As a church, this place is too small for us. Amen. As a church, this place is too small for us. Amen. As a church, this place is too small for us. Amen. Look at we want to dance. There's no space to dance. Our children want to make presentation last Sunday. There's no place for them to make their presentation. When our women is having their day, there's no place for them to express themselves. When our men are having their day, there's no place to express themselves. When the choir are ministering, they are limited. There's no space for them to render their ministration. This place is too small. Amen. It's too small. Amen. It's too small. Amen. On December, when we are having our Thanksgiving, you are asking me to fill the place. Where do I fill? You cannot fill a full bottle. You fill what is empty. And the Lord said to us, Give me, give me the capacity to fill. Child of God, what is what is your aim? What are you looking at? Are you seeing a church? that this place is really too small for us. Our children cannot exercise themselves. Our children cannot play because play is part of their growth. As they play, they grow. As they practice, they grow. But they are being restricted because, behold, the place is too small. But God has given us a big place. 
What is stopping us from possessing the hands? Are we angry enough to say no? This place is too small. We are on the verge of a big cathedral. We are on the verge of getting a big cathedral. Can we make it? Yes. Church, can we make it? Yes. Church, can we make it? Yes. Church, can we make it? Yes. Do you see the possibility? Yes. Do you see the possibility? Yes. Shall we rise on our feet? My spirit say yes. Say yes. So yes. My spirit say yes. So yes. Unto the Lord. Unto the Lord.
I shall take you to another place. Amen. After all the miracle, he said to his disciples, let us get over to the other side. There's something bigger on the other side. Whatever you're having is a small chicken change. Whatever I grow, you have seen in your life, it's not where God is taking you. It's just a stepping stone. Amen. Don't relax. Don't sit down. Go say to the children of Israel. He said to Moses, at the time, children of Israel wanted to settle in the wilderness. God said to Moses, I didn't promise you wilderness. I promise you, Caleb. Say to the children of Israel, move forward. Amen. I command you today to move forward in every area of your life. Move forward in your finances. Move forward in your business. Move Amen. forward in your office. Move forward in everything that concerns you. It's a time for growth. It's a time for expansion. In the name of Jesus, I want you to be a man for the day.
or you want to do something big in your life, and ask someone the scriptures to show them that it is your will for expansion. It is your will for growth. It is your will for enlargement over their life. And they have spoken to you as it is in their heart. Oh Lord, my God, I join my faith with your faith this morning to say, Oh Lord, answer the prayers. Amen. Answer the prayer of your children. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh Lord. Isaac said to Esau, If you get cross, you will receive your miracle. The yoke shall be broken. And as I said, because of the anointing, the yoke has been broken. I declare that every limitation, every power that has limited their people, will limit them no more. Amen. They will go into the marketplace and they will excel. Amen. They will succeed. Amen. They will prosper. Whatever they have got money in their hand, it's not money because they are putting good money in their hands. Whatever they have got house, it's not house because they are taking them to mansions. They are taking them to estates. Whatever they have got car, it's not car because they are giving them those machines that they need it. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I declare as a servant that they are prosperous. Amen. They swear with them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I bring your church before you. You told us in the month of December last year that where we are is too small. What is the capacity you want us to fill? We want you to fill. And you ask us to give you the capacity. Oh Lord, we are in the business of giving you the capacity. And we say to you, this place is too small. Amen. We can't dance, we can't worship, we can't express ourselves. We are limited from every corner. Oh Lord, as far as we can see, we we'll receive them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. We give you glory and praise. Everyone at the sign of our voice, whenever they are watching us, oh God, and they have heard our word of the Lord from our mouth. That they, where their eyes too small. Lord, I pray for increase, man. I pray for the expansion. I pray you will bring to pass the desire of their heart wherever they are watching that have called upon you. Thank you, my friend. In Jesus' name, we have watched you. If you believe that prayer, say what I mean. She will come back with testimony next Sunday. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep coming for us as we take our seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go down to Social Worship Center International. Restoring the dignity of the gentle man. And he says, Spirit, yes, the soul. But he lives in the body. We care for our spiritual, for our physical, for our social, for our emotional life. Keep joining us on all our platforms. And our God we keep doing it well. Remain our travel as we keep coming your way. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and His Holy Spirit. Be with us now for the moment. Amen. Surely. Shall not die. Believe. 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 Believ